In today's video, we are going to learn how to find the logarithm of complex numbers. So given that a complex number, say z, is equal to x plus jy. Now we can represent this in the exponential form as r times e exponent j theta. So how do we find the logarithm of the complex number z? To do so, let's take the log of all the three terms that we have here. So ln z is equal to ln x plus jy is equal to ln r times e exponent j theta. At this point, let's focus on ln z and then ln r times e exponent j theta. Now let's simplify. So you realize that r and then e exponent j theta are products. Now we know that the logarithm of a product is equal to the sum of the logarithms of the factors. Therefore, if you have ln a times b, then that is equal to ln a plus ln b. So basically, we are going to apply this property of logarithm here. So that is going to be ln r plus ln e exponent j theta. Now because this is an exponent, we are going to transport this in front of the log. So this becomes ln r plus j theta times ln e. And because this is the natural logarithm of e, the natural logarithm has a base of e. Therefore, log of the same base is equal to 1. So instead of writing ln e, we have 1. So finally, we have ln r plus j theta. And this is equal to ln z. Now let's call this equation 1. We have r to be the modulus and then theta to be the argument. And this is called the principal value of ln z. So principal value of ln z and is obtained from ln z by restricting the argument of z to lie in the range negative pi is less than theta is less than or equal to pi. So basically this is how to find the principal value of ln z. We can obtain this from ln z by restricting the argument of z to lie in the range negative pi is less than theta is less than or equal to pi. Now one important thing we need to take notice of is that the argument of z in itself is multivalued. Therefore, we have the argument of z equals theta plus 2n pi where n is any integer. So to find the general value or the set of all possible values of the natural logarithm of z, we basically replace theta by theta plus 2n pi. So from equation 1, we can have ln of z equals ln r plus j into brackets we are going to replace theta by theta plus 2 n pi so we have theta plus 2 n pi where n is any integer now let's call this equation 2 so basically this is the equation to find the general value or the set of all possible values set of all possible values of ln z. Now notice that in equation 2, L is uppercase. So the moment we have L to be uppercase, then we want to find the general value of ln z. However, if L is lowercase, that is in the case of equation 1, 
then you want to find the principal value of L and Z. So let's take notice of the differences. Now let's move on as we try to simplify equation 1 and equation 2. We know that the modulus R can be determined using the formula the square root of x square plus y square. Now we can simplify this as x square plus y square all exponents 1 over 2. And to find the value of theta that is given by tan inverse of y on x. Now if you've watched any of my previous videos, whenever I want to calculate the value of angle theta, I always use the absolute value of y and then x. However, in this particular video, we are going to use the value of x and y as they are. So if x is a negative value, we are still going to maintain the value as it is. And if y is also a negative value, we are also going to maintain the value as it is. So theta is equal to tan inverse of y on x. Therefore, let's substitute r and then theta into equation 1 and equation 2. So for equation 1, we can have ln z equals ln r. Now in place of r, we have x square plus y square, all exponents 1 over 2 plus j theta. So we have j into brackets, tan inverse we have tan inverse of y on x. Now because we have this to be the exponent, we can transport this in front of the log. So this becomes 1 over 2 ln x square plus y square plus j into bracket tan inverse of y on x. Now let's call this equation 3. And this is how to find the principal value of L and Z. Notice that L is in lower case. Now to equation 2. We are going to have uppercase L and Z equals half ln x square plus y square plus j into bracket we are going to have theta to be tan inverse of y on x plus 2n pi where n is any integer so basically this is how to find the general value of ln z. So mostly in our calculations, we are going to use equation 3 and equation 4. So without wasting much time, let's solve some problems. So let's take problem 1. Evaluate i uppercase L and negative J, I, I, lowercase L and negative J. So for the uppercase L, we are going to find the general value of ln of negative J. And also for the lowercase L, we are going to find the principal value of ln of negative J. So let's solve these two together. So we know that negative J is a complex number. Therefore, let z equals negative j, and that is equal to 0 minus j. So for the x value, we have 0, and for the y value, we have negative 1. Now, since we want to find the general value of ln of negative j, we are going to use equation 4. So from equation 4, we have ln of z equals 1 over 2 ln of x square plus y square 
plus j into bracket we have tan inverse of y on x plus 2n pi where n is any integer so we have 1 over 2 times ln of x square so we have x to be 0 so 0 square plus y we have negative 1 square plus j into bracket tan inverse of y we have y to be negative 1 x to be 0 plus 2n pi now let's simplify so this becomes 1 over 2 ln 0 square is 0 plus negative 1 square is 1 so 0 plus 1 is 1 plus j into bracket now negative 1 over 0 is equal to negative infinity so basically we have tan inverse of negative infinity plus 2n pi ln of 1 is equal to 0 so 0 times half is still 0 plus j into bracket tan inverse of negative infinity is equal to negative pi on 2 that is negative 90 plus 2n pi so finally we have j into bracket negative pi on 2 plus 2n pi so basically this is ln of negative j that is the general value the general value of ln negative j so basically you can input integer values into this equation in place of n to get the set of all possible values of ln of negative j now let's move on to ii we are going to find the principal value that is lowercase ln of negative j now since we know the equation for the general value of ln of negative j we are going to put in integer values of n into this equation such that the argument of z lies between negative pi is less than theta is less than or equal to pi so let's start by putting in n equals zero so let n equals zero now if n is equal to zero two times zero times pi goes to zero and we are left with negative pi on two now negative pi on two can be found within the range negative pi is less than theta is less than or equal to pi Hence, we can say that the principal value of ln of negative j is equal to j negative pi on 2. So this becomes j into bracket negative pi on 2 plus 2 times 0 times pi. So ln of negative j is equal to j times negative pi on 2. And finally, we have the principal value of ln of negative j to be equal to negative j times pi on 2. So this is the principal value of ln of negative j. Now let's move on as we solve the second problem.